I'm going to show you how to make a cat growing up video. Like the one I've done here with my lovely cat Freya. I'll show you the things you need and the processes involved. Though not that one. The first thing you're going to need is a cat. <coughs> no, not a fluff ball. A little kitten. You're also going to need a computer, a camera, Photoshop, Morphing software, and video editing software. Once you have all these things, start taking photos of your cat. Keep taking photos of your cat every day. Take as many photos as you can. Oh, by the way, it's a good idea to get someone to help you with the photography, as cats are notoriously bad at paying attention. Yes, you. Are you ready? This is a serious photo shoot. Thank you. After about a year, your cat should be more or less full grown. So you can make the selection of photos you need for the video. Here's a quick unedited run through all the photos I took for my video. For the purposes of this tutorial, I'm going to select 14 images, though originally I used about 60. Try to select photos where the cat has the most similar position in each. Having made your selection, copy them, create a new folder, enter the folder and paste the photos there. And now we're ready to open Photoshop and begin the process of image alignment and sizing. For this purpose, you'll need to create a Photoshop document with each image on a separate layer. Select File, Scripts, Load Images into Stack, then Browse to find the photos you have saved in your selected folder. Click on one and then press Ctrl A to select them all. Photoshop will load them all into a single layered Photoshop document. Start by turning off visibility for all but the bottom layer where the cat is oldest. Click on the bottom layer to select it. Now, you've probably noticed the background on most of my photos isn't pure white. Here's a quick and easy method to make your backgrounds white. In Curves, select the white point eyedropper and click somewhere on the background of the image. Select the Dodge tool Make the brush size very large. Set the range to highlights and set the exposure low. Use the brush on any background areas that are still a bit grey. Now comes the all important image alignment part. Select free transform to size and level the photo so it fits nicely in the middle of the frame. You are now ready to move to the next layer up. Make it visible and select it. Perform the background whitening procedure as before. And then make its opacity around 50%. So you can see the layer below showing through. Use free transform again to size and move the photo so it is in line but slightly smaller than the one below. Align the feet of the cat first, and then set an anchor point there to size the image. Put the opacity back to 100%. Show and select the next layer. You should repeat the process with every image, all the way up to the very first. Let's skip through to the point where all the images have been sized and aligned. Next, we have to turn the Photoshop file back into separate images using Export Layers to Files. All the photos are now aligned and sized, so we have the beginnings of a time lapse. But as you can see in this example, using my original selection, it is still quite jerky. The next stage is to use the morphing software to smooth out the transitions from one photo to the next. 
I used Phantomorph for this. There's a link in the description. On opening, it starts the project wizard. Make sure Create New Project is selected. Then on the next page, select Sequence Morph and move on to the following page. Select Plus and find the first image you created with Photoshop. Select Plus again and select the next image in the sequence. Go to the next page and keep skipping on until you reach Finish. Congratulations! You are now ready to begin the most difficult and time-consuming section of the whole process, which is to set the morphing anchor dots. These dictate which parts of the photo will move into the positions of the next photo and vice versa. Start by selecting the plus sign near the middle of the screen to add anchor dots and then make a selection of around 10 dots on the first photo that will surround the cat. You will see as you place each dot, an equivalent one appears on the second image. These surrounding dots will help the program work on only the cat and not the whole photo. The next section is the most fundamentally important bit. You have to put dots on all the main features of the cat. Use the mouse wheel to zoom in and out of the photo and hold the spacebar and mouse button to move it around. It doesn't matter what order you place the dots. You will probably notice that the dots on the second image do not appear in the same relative position on the cat's face. They will need to be moved manually later on and this movement is what dictates how the morph will move and ultimately how realistic it looks. Keep going round the whole outline of the cat, including the features of the paws. In Phantomorph, the bottom image shows how the morph looks and can be actioned with the slider along its top. A morph works by fading one image into another at the same time as distorting them both so that the features in one move to the equivalent position on the other. At the moment when you move the slider, you will see that it only fades between them because you haven't yet moved any dots. Leave the slider in the middle while you are working so you can see what is happening as you move the dots. Here is where you are going to have to be very careful. Move each dot on the second photo to the same relative position on the first photo. See how when you hover the pointer over a dot on one photo, the equivalent dot on the other photo flashes to indicate the connection between them. Work through all the dots, moving each one into the same position as its connecting dot on the first image. The more accurate you are with this, the better your morph will be. See how the bottom image distorts into alignment as you move the dots. Take your time to ensure the dots are accurately placed and use the slider on top of the bottom image to see how the morph is progressing. Positioning all the dots is not easy and often they get muddled up. One feature with Phantomorph that can help with this is to show the triangles. This shows lined edges of triangles between the dots. In the software these are used to distort each section of the photo with them showing, you can get a clearer idea of the movement of each dot and how it affects the morph. For a demonstration, I'm going to move one dot out of position so it crosses the line with another triangle. This is something you want to try and avoid when aligning your dots as it messes up the morph, but it's easier to check if you have the triangles visible. See how messed up it is when you move the slider. Toggle between triangles on and off by pressing Ctrl T. Right, now that the morph is pretty smooth, we are ready to move on to the next image. But first, let's save the morph to ensure we don't lose the work we've done. For the next stage, we're going to need to view the sequence list and then select the plus sign to add the next image in the sequence. 
double click on the right hand empty image and then select the third one of your photos. As before you will see that the dots are not aligned with the cat's face on the right hand image. So again you will have to move them into position. Sometimes it can be quicker to move a number of dots in one go. Select the arrow pointer near the middle of the screen and then click and drag out a rectangle to select all the dots you want to move in one go. You will likely still have to move some of the dots individually to their final positions. You might have to add more dots as you go along. Click on the plus sign and then add them like I'm doing here around the cat's eyes. I'm doing this so that when the morph is run, the eyelids look like they are actually moving rather than just fading to the open position. It doesn't matter whether you add dots on the right or left photos. Remove the dots if you need to do so by right clicking on them. Keep repeating this process until you have done all your photos, making sure you keep saving your work as you go along. Phantom Morph doesn't make backups. Now you are ready to export your morphing video. For this tutorial, I'm going to load up my original cat time lapse. There. To make the final video, you need to go to the Export Movie icon, set the export format to QuickTime Movie, make sure the image sequence is set to All, and hit the Export button. Give the video an interesting name and save it. Now we're ready to take it to the final stage of adding sound and preparing it for presentation on whatever platform you like. For this you'll need the video editing software I mentioned earlier. I like to use DaVinci Resolve. It's powerful, fast, relatively easy to use and best of all, free. So load it up, drag your cat video into the timeline and then drag in your music. The movements of the cat are unlikely to be in time with the music. as was the case with mine here. So you'll need to adjust the speed of the cat footage. Right click on the clip, select clip speed and drag the speed percentage controller to change it. I'm going to try roughly double speed to start. Well that's actually not bad, so we'll leave it at that. Now we need to make the music last as long as the clip. So drag the end of the music to line up with the end of the video footage. You should also drag in the fade out pointer a bit so that the music doesn't suddenly cut off in an annoying and unprofessional way. Now we can export it. So click on the deliver button down at the bottom right of the screen. Give it a file name. Select MP4, add to render queue and finally, start render. So there you have it, one cat growing up time-lapse video. And it only took a year. Pretty good going, if you ask me. And now here comes the finished video. Well done, everyone who kept watching to this point. You deserve a medal. <laughs>